is the first lecture on interacting systems. Up to now, we have discussed ideal systems, which are non-interacting systems. And of course, if you want to make a contact with the experimental results, we have to add the interparticle interactions in, into your calculation. So let us start with a system like low density gas, so that the interactions can be quite small. But nevertheless, there are interactions and we are going to take into a look into the problem. Now let's write the Hamiltonian of the interacting system with the interaction term, potential energy term. which is the earlier kinetic energy term. And a term that describes interactions. Let's write it like this. But it's like a potential energy of interaction, isn't it, between particles are j, and you sum over all i, smaller than j. The reason for this is not to count the interactions twice, isn't it? If you let i take any value, then you have to divide the sum by 2 to just not double count. Okay, this is a way of writing, correct way of writing, to prevent the double counting of interactions. Here, I and J goes up to N. Imagine we have N particles in the system, atoms or molecules, and of course, this is a pairwise kind of interaction, and it, it goes over all n, n minus 1 over 2 pairs. That's the number of pairs in a system of n particles. If we have three particles, what's the result? 3, 2, 6 divided by 2, 3 pairs. 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, isn't it? So, exactly. Now, let's look at this potential energy. It is usually a function of the distance between particles as follows. Let's look at that function closely. Uij is a function of Rij, where Rij is Rj minus Ri. If these interactions are central, that means attraction or repulsion along the line joining the particles, isn't it? That's the central def definition of central potential. Then, of course, everything depends on 
only the distance between these two particles. There's no vectorial nature, no angles, so the potential energy of interaction depends only on the distance between particles. Okay? These are important So we, let's say we know the Hamiltonian for the system. We know the kinetic energy term and we know how the particles are interacting with each other through, described through a potential energy. Let's write the partition function of the system. That's what we need to study the thermodynamics, find the equation of state, for example, thermodynamic state. Let's write this partition function, and all of a sudden we are going to see that there is a difficulty with this interaction term. Well, it is collection of indistinguishable particles, 1 over n factorial, as we have discussed up to now, h cube to the power n, we have n particles in the system, and an integral, a sum of terms of this type, minus beta e, or Hamiltonian That is our partition function. Now, of course, this term complicates the matter. We cannot write it as multiplication of terms anymore because that thing is complicated. But the integral over momentum is quite easy, as before, isn't it? Very easy, we have done that. Let's put the result into the expression. It is 1 over n factorial. Well, lambda t to the power 3n, isn't it? We have done that, I don't know how many times. And the resulting integral, remaining integral, is only on the potential energy part, minus beta i j. The 3 n r. Well, that thing is only on the configuration space, isn't it? R space, real space, where we have distribution of atoms and or molecules, that means particles. Hmm? We call that configurational integral. We write this as 1 over n factorial lambda t 3n 
and this is a special <laughs> integral. Let's call it z v t. That integral is called the configurational integral. Here is the form. Of course, you know what thermal wavelength is, isn't it? H over square root 2 pi m k v t. This is the configurational integral. of the system and we have to find a way to calculate this. If the system is like a dilute gas, the particles are further apart from each other and interactions are small, isn't it? Well, let's see if ideal if we are dealing with ideal gas, what happens to this integral? If there, there are no interactions, if u is zero, then this exponential is one, integrand is one, d cube r, d cube, d cube r to the power n, it's like v to the n, isn't it? So that is equal to v to the n, and that's what we had before, isn't it? This means q n v t is v to the n divided by n factorial lambda t to the 3n, isn't it? We have done this problem before, exactly in this form. Now, let's concentrate on this. Now, if you want to discuss this dilute gas problem, well, interactions are small in some sense, we want to expand this in terms of a quantity. If you want to expand something, what type of quantity are you looking for? The quantity in terms of which you want to expand this. What is the most important property of that quantity? Yes, it must be small, isn't it? So that higher powers are even smaller. So you have to find something small so that you can expand this as a series in terms of that small quantity. Okay, let's Find a small quantity. In terms of which you can expand this configurational integral. And that is a quantity like this. Meyer function. 
Хорошо. Is this small? If the interaction is very small, let's take it to be zero. What is the result? e to the zero is one. One minus one is zero. When no interaction, this is zero. So it can only be something of importance if that thing is not negligible, okay? So that the term has some number. But it must be a very small number, isn't it? This thing is quite a small number. So we can use this to expand our integral. So no interactions. FIHA is zero. Well, with interactions included, FIHA will be only appreciable if two interacting particles are close to each other. Okay. Now let's look at typical forms of these functions, the quantities uij and fij. Let's try to plot it. Do you know the potential energy of interaction between particles, atoms or molecules, for example? as a function of distance between them, you must know this function. What type of function is this? The answer is coming from the form. <laughs> well, you must know it. I, I, I told you what this is. There's a repulsion part and a small attraction part, isn't it? The repulsion, repulsive part is something like this, a very small negative attractive part. Potential negative means attractive, positive means repulsive, isn't it? This is the repulsive part and that is the small attractive part. Well, when you think about interactions between particles, of course, there will be some repulsion, some attraction. When do you expect repulsion? This tells you when the distance between them becomes smaller and smaller, they approach to each other, they will repel because electrons will repel the electrons and nuclei will repel the nuclei coming close. Huh? if there are two atoms. So, this is the very general form. Repulsive part and an attractive part. Okay? This is a very common knowledge, so you have to know this. If somebody asks you how two atoms or two molecules interact, what is the poten form of the potential energy, you have to plot this, okay? Now, if these are embedded in, a, in an environment like crystal, a metal, there are free electrons and the free electrons will introduce some oscillations because if you put a two nuclei in the crystal, the electronic charge is going to be correlated and there's some ordering of the charge. But otherwise, this is a repulsive part and when the distance between particles becomes larger, it goes to zero. 
of course, when there's quite a bit of distance between particles, they don't see each other. No interaction. Okay? <coughs> Let's look at the, the other quantity. Well, this minimum is important, isn't it? R0. If they want to form a combined system, bound system, the second particle is more or less at the distance R0 to minimize the energy, huh? total energy in the system. Let's look at this small f quantity. It is, of course, related, must be, well, something like this. Minus one, zero. Why minus one? Because if u goes to infinity, this thing is zero, isn't it? So it is minus one. If it is zero, like here, this is the zero potential, this thing is also zero. Huh? So that's the overall shape. as a function of R and J. Now, let's expand this integrand in the configuration integral in terms of Fij, in powers of Fij. Let's use this small quantity to deal with the configurational integral. Well, this takes on the form with that term defined in this manner, you have, well, multiplication of terms, 1 plus f i j, isn't it? And that thing is, Isn't that the form now? Because the exponential, we have only the exponential part, and exponential is f minus f plus 1, 1 plus f. Huh? That is the exponential we have in the definition. It is taking 1 to the other side, 1 plus f. <coughs> Now, if you look at the form of this expansion, you have a form which can be written as follows. This thing is an integral. Well, multiply terms of the order of, well, of the form of 1 plus something the first term, after you multiply everything, should be 1, isn't it? That survives. Then Fij terms, then multipli multiplication of Fij's, which are smaller terms. Here is the form. Etc. 
press the form. You can take a couple of terms and multiply and you will see. Well, in this expansion, you can associate each term with a graph, okay? N particle graph. This expansion is also known as cluster expansion, okay? For example, if n equals 8, let's look at the terms, associated terms with this number, possible terms. Let's take, consider two of the terms. One I will call Ta. Could be something like this. And another term could be having the form like this. Isn't it? These are possibilities. Let's see, well, we call this eight particle graphs. You'll see the meaning of cluster like if you write the terms as follows. Eight particle graphs can be shown like this. This one, particle two, particle three, particle four, Well, what are the connections? 3, 4, and 6, 8. 3, 4, and 6, 8. Here is a graph, isn't it? It shows TA. Huh? Let's show the second integral as a graph. Similarly, what terms we have? One, two, one, four, six, seven. One, two, one, four, six, seven. It's like a eight particle cluster, isn't it? 
So, you can look at these as factorized because you can write the integrals separately. Let's look at them as factorized quantities. Ta, for example, is going to be, well, nothing with 1. Okay, it is LO. Similarly, 2, nothing with 2. Nothing with 5. Nothing with 7. Interactions between 3 and 4. F3, 4. D cube R3, D cube R4, and the other integral 6, 8, F6, 8, D cube R6, D cube R8, isn't it? So we can also show this as a graph as follows, we have a 1, we have 2, five, seven. And three, four are together. We have factorized the interactions or terms. And six, eight. So our TA can be written as a multiplication of terms of that sort. Similarly for TB. Why don't you write it? TB can be written as follows by looking at that. Here there is a three particle term. Well, this is three, five, what well, else? Three and five are, or eight also, isn't it? Eight. And a two six and seven, isn't it? Six seven and one cluster of three particles. One, two, four, isn't it? One, two, Four. So, there are three clusters of one particle each, three clusters of one particle, one cluster of two particles, one cluster of three particles. That's the cluster expansion. You can imagine how many terms we have in an n-particle graph. Huh? N-particle graph. Huge possible, huge number of possibilities. But of course, 
our partition function will be a sum of, sum of all distinct graphs, isn't it? As much as you can write, sum of all distinct n particle graphs. Now, let's go to the concept of expansion and small interactions, that is, low density limit. We have understood the concept of cluster expansion. And now let's consider low density limit. This is the limit of where small interactions between particles, in some sense. Particles are further away from each other. In this case, we can write our term approximately as follows. Keep only a few terms in the expansion. For example, the first correction will be the pair term, isn't it, Ij? Well, as far as interactions are concerned, of course, it is more probable that two particles are coming closer instead of the three, three particles coming closer. The probability becomes very small if the density is low, isn't it? Hmm? Four particle cluster is even smaller. So, with this approximation, then, we can write the configuration integral as follows, 1 over v to the n, 1 plus this correction term, that is our integral. Let's see what we can do about it. The first term is going to be 1 again, isn't it? Because that thing is going to give, give us v to the n integral. Huh? v to the n cancels v to the n in the denominator. Let's write the integral like 1 plus, well, the remaining integral is including only this fij term, this pair interaction between two particles in some sense, d 3 and ri. The effect of interaction is in the second part. Hmm? Again, we have n, n minus 1 over 2 pairs. That's the number of terms, if you like. And we have the following result. So it simplifies, isn't it? We can look at each term as a pair term and keep only one, one of these terms and multiply with the number of pairs. The integral will be the same 
Well, it's a dummy variable over which you are integrating. For each pair, you have the same integral. Okay? Let's generalize this approach for the equation of state. The expansion approach for the equation of state, if you do the same, we have virial expansion, okay? We have to keep this result. We are going to use it. Now, of course, if you want to do a calculation, a real calculation for a real gas, we have to know what the potential energy is. What's the form of potential energy in terms of interparticle distance? If you, if you can give me that, I can calculate these terms. Eh? Do you know any form, any analytical form for that potential energy? We'll see some soon. And then you'll see that you know those things. Well, let's call this famous expansion, video expansion of the equation of state. A similar expansion for the equation of state is known as virial expansion, and it may be written in this form. So this is capital V of the system divided by capital N, the number of particles in the system. So this is volume per particle, small v, capital V over N. Well, in the ideal system, what is this? Then, PV over NKVT is equal to what? Come on. For an ideal system, PV is NKVT. So, what is PV over NKVT? One. PV equals NKBT. So P times capital V is capital NKBT. If you divide the two sides, you get 1. So the first term is going to be 1 almost. It's better to be 1. But the expansion can be written as something like this. This is the virial expansion. So you expand this term in terms of temperature dependent coefficients. And there's also a temperature dependence in the thermal wavelength, isn't it? Lambda T cube over V. These two things are always compared with each other. Lambda t as distance is v to the power one third. This is interparticle distance. If they are of comparable magnitude, then we are in the quantum limit, isn't it? If lambda t is large, that's the limit. If lambda t is small, we are in the classical limit isn't it? Large temperature because lambda t is inverse to proportion to square root temperature. Okay. Let's finish this part. We are almost at the end. By defining what we have. This is volume per particle. 
small v, volume per particle, these coefficients are known as virial coefficients. And they have to be calculated. For example, the first term is 1, as it should be. The second term is minus 2 pi in lambda t cube, 0 to infinity, e to the interaction potential energy of interaction, beta is 1 over kBT minus 1 r squared dr. It is an integral like this. And if you know you are the interaction energy, you can calculate that. Can you calculate that? Maybe. Well, I will do it for you in the next lecture, okay?